If you just picked up a new HyperX product, keep watching the video. I'm going to show you how you use the Engine Unit software to get the best out of your product. Hi, and welcome to Bill and Tech. This is the place where we do product and tech reviews. In the last video, I've done a review of the HyperX Ally Origins Core TKL keyboard. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link either here or here, and you can check that video out. But in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the software that's used to control the RGB. I'll show you a way to download it, get it installed, then we'll see what this software can do. If this is the first time visiting the channel and you don't want to miss any new videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So I've been using this keyboard now for quite some time and I've got to say I'm a big fan of this keyboard. I especially like the RGB features on this keyboard and the way you can customise them. And the software that we use to customise the RGB is the Engine Unity software. Now a couple of things you need to bear in mind about the software. One is, it's still in beta form, so it might change in the near future. Two, you've got to have a Microsoft account to download it from a Microsoft store. And number three, which states on the HyperX website, is it's only available for the PC at the moment. I don't think there's any Mac support. The good thing about the software is it's free to download and HyperX have got a link for it on their website, but I'll put a link for it down below as well. What we're going to do is we're going to download it, we'll get it installed and we'll set up a few basic profiles just to let you see how to use the software. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is go into the HyperX website and find a product and download the software. So I've got to find my keyboard, which is the Ally Origins Core keyboard. Click on that scroll down to the bottom of the page and there should be a download link for the Engine Unity software. So click on that. It'll take us to the Microsoft website where we just get a link for the software. We'll click on a link and then that will take us to the Microsoft store where we can download the software. Don't forget you've got to have a Microsoft account and be signed into your account. So once you're finally into the Microsoft store, you can see the button where it says install the app. So just click on that and it should only take a few minutes to download. It's not a big download. If you scroll down the page, you can see some of the details. Like I say, it says it's still in beta, it's only available on PC, no Mac support. So it only takes two minutes to install. So once you're ready, you hit the launch button and the engine unit software will open up. So any HyperX products that the software recognises will be on the left hand side on this little bar here. You can see it recognises my keyboard. So if I click on the keyboard, it'll show you your keyboard on the screen and it'll give you all the controls ready to set up your keyboard. So this is basically the home screen. So from here you do everything. Change your RGBs, add effects, add trigger effects, and set presets. Starting at the top right hand corner, you've got a slider for your brightness. You've also got a button for your game mode. You can toggle on and off. Disable some keys. Just switched off just now. And you've also got a little icon for your presets. Now you can load numerous presets onto the app itself, but the keyboard can only store three presets at one time. So here's where you store all your presets. You can name them, rearrange them. On the bottom of the screen, you get various tabs. One is for effects. Next one's for target. That means like where you want your effects to go to, either all lights or certain individual keys. The color, you can change the color and it also change the speed of the effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic profile just to let you see what the, each individual controls do and how to use them. Okay, so if you want to set up a new preset, just go up with the preset icon, click on that. Now down the bottom you've got various things like Add, Detail, Duplicate and Export. Just click the Add to create a new one. You can also rename it, so I'll call this one, call it Call of Duty. So in various games you can have different presets if you want. You can also link each preset to a game. So you just click on the Add button, find your executable button for your game and link it that way. I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to set that up. So I've got it, renamed it, Call of Duty. You can change the image if you want. I'm going to leave it as standard. Once you're happy with that, hit the done. And that's you ready to start programming. I've, I can see I've got a wave effect at the moment. I'm just going to delete that. So we'll start from a clean slate. So to delete it, all you need to do is hit the wee trash can beside it and that's you deleting the effects. Now to add effect, obviously you just click the add effect button. And these are the effects you've got to choose from. You can hit each one, cycle through it and just look at it. They're fairly straightforward, fairly self-explanatory. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a solid effect and then assign each individual key to that colour. So I've chosen solid, change the target to selection rather than all lights. So I can then highlight individual keys I want to make solid. Once I'm happy with my key selection, what I can do is I can then change the colour. Obviously, you've got your colour panel. You can either use a wheel 
a little circles at the side. You've also got a little slider at the bottom there, which adjusts the intensity of the colour. Again, you can see the changes actually on the keyboard itself. You can also change the brightness of the keys using the opacity slider. You can sample a colour from another part of the screen. You can minimise this, choose a picture, sample a colour from the picture and use that for your RGBs. That's a nice little feature, I like that. You can also type in hex code of a particular colour if you, if you like one of those. So I'm going to choose this colour here. So that's the keys selected. Don't forget, what you need to do is save that preset to your keyboard. Like I say, you can save three presets to your keyboard. They're assigned to F1, F2 and F3 key. I'm going to save it to the F1 key. That's it saved. So if you've got your presets, you can see Call of Duty. And if I click on the other presets, it shows the other ones. Click on back to Call of Duty and that's your preset there for Call of Duty. Now, of course, you can add more than one effect to each preset. You can layer as many effects as you want. So I'm going to choose a breathing effect. Select the keys. I don't want to add to the whole keyboard. And you can select various keys by dragging the left mouse button. Again, if you want, you can change the colour. Change the speed. Usually I like to save each preset after each change I make, just to force a habit. While you're building your presets, you might have a lot of effects. So what you can do is you can hide each of the effect just to see what the other one looks like by hitting this wee eye icon. Now let's see, that basically turns it on and off. So you can just see it. It doesn't delete it. It's still there. So above the effects, you've got what they call triggered effects. Now you select these, you've got three trigger effects that are loaded in the software. You get flame, explosion and fade. Basically what that means is when you press a key, you get an effect. This is the flame one. So pressing the keys, you get a flame effect. Again, you can change the colour of those effects. And you can have any colour you want. Just click the wee icon to change effects. Go in and select another effect, add it. And this is the explosion effect. That's a bit more dramatic, that one. You can see the RGB really well done in this keyboard, really nice and bright. Again, I like to save that preset to my keyboard. So that says we've got two effects and we've got a trigger effect on this preset. So if you want, you can keep adding effects. We'll add one more effect, we'll add the wave effect. Some of the controls for the wave effect are slightly different. You've got an angle adjustment, for example. You can choose the angle of the wave. You can either type it in the box or just use the wave slider. You've also got a nice colour palette. You can edit the colour part to suit your taste, obviously. You just right click each bar and delete it. That's just taking the colours away. You can slide the bars to either side to increase or decrease the colours. You can also add more bars. You can change the colour of the bars themselves. So basically we've got starting at red and it's going to set a pinky on the right hand side. It's a wave. Go through those colours, turn to pink. It's predominantly pink as you can see that. If you want you can save that colour preset. So you don't need to keep reinventing each time. If you create another colour palette, by selecting different colours. You can save that palette as well. So you can have numerous different colour palettes. So I'm just going to quickly make this a bit blue. If I want to save that one, just click the B button. And I can switch between the two just by clicking on them. That's one of the pink, that's one of the blue. Now as I mentioned before, some of the effects do have different controls to them. For example, the swipe, see the controls are slightly different, same idea, two different colours. So we'll go between the two colours, swipe between red and green. Again, you can change the colours very, very easily. Just go in and select different colours. So I'll go for a blue and a green. You can change the speed, obviously. Instead of changing the angle, you can change the direction of the swipe, left and right, up and down. So it's got a nice level of control. So just check each different effect. Some of them have got slightly different controls. So that was just a quick run through how you create a preset. Very straightforward. And like I say, you can layer many effects. So it's quite customizable. Quite like it. So that's you've got your presets set up and you've saved your three favorite presets to your keyboard. What I found is I've got to actually shut the app down before I can actually toggle through my different presets on the keyboard. It doesn't work by minimizing the app on the taskbar. That doesn't work. You've actually got to close the app down and then you can toggle through your different presets. Kind of makes sense because you go into the program, design your presets, 
transfer your 3 to your keyboard and you're finished with the program. Kind of makes sense. But it'd be nice though, if you're in the program, you can cycle through your different presets to see them. Hopefully that's something that maybe HyperX will address in one of their future updates. So as well as the RGB functions as the keyboard, you can also assign different keys and different functions. At the top of the screen you can see it's got two tabs, one is lights and one other one is keys. So lights obviously deals with your RGB. If you select keys at the top of the screen, you get a menu down the bottom of the screen that says assignments. So what you've got to do is select a key first, and then your assignments unlocked. You've got keyboard function, mouse function, multimedia, macro, window shortcuts and disabled. So for each key you select, you can then go in and assign it say a keyboard function, a mouse function, a multimedia function and so on. The ones that I find most useful are the multimedia keys. Because this keyboard doesn't actually have dedicated multimedia keys, I find this function very useful. It's just a little tip to remember, if you really must have multimedia keys, you can actually go in and reassign them. One of the other assignments which is quite useful is the macro function. So you can assign a macro to each individual key if you want. Macro is just a set of keystrokes that's been recorded and you assign that to a key. A good example would be if you wanted to open a new tab in say the Chrome browser. So you record the keystrokes to do that, save it and assign that to the number one key. Don't forget obviously to save your profile to your keyboard. So when you're in the Chrome browser, you want to open a new tab, without using a mouse, all you do is hit the number one key and a new tab will open. And that's just using the shortcut the control T, which you've recorded as a macro on that key. Like I say, you can do that with all the keys if you want. The problem is you've got to remember those shortcuts. Okay, so that wraps up for this review of the HyperX Engine U2 software. So what do I think of this software overall? Well, it's a fairly common piece of software. I mean, it does let you control your RGB. You can layer effects, build up your presets, and save numerous presets onto the app itself, then load your three favourite presets onto your keyboard. So in that respect, it ticks all the boxes. You can do your, your macro, your shortcuts. That's something I don't really bother for myself because I struggle to remember enough shortcuts as it is, but that facility is there if you want it to. I've heard of a lot of people having issues with this software, can't get it downloaded, won't install, won't run properly. Let me know in the comment section below if you've had any issues. Let me know if you love this software or you actually hate it. And if you've got any questions at all, just drop them in the comment section down below. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, links for those down below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.